Hello everyone, Lisa Schlossberg here. I wanted to make this video today as an introduction to emotional eating in general. The more that I work with people around this, the more I realize we start off very confused. A lot of people don't have any idea how we end up in a situation that is emotional eating to begin with. There is part of us that's emotional, there's part of us that's eating, and how and why are we struggling so much to understand this. So before getting into the details, what to do about it, how to understand it, etc., I think it's important to just start with how did we get here, generally. And so the way that I normally do this is if you imagine that in one hand I have a body, a human body over here, and then a plus sign, okay, body plus, and then a brain over here. We have a body plus a brain equals a human. The reason that I break it down this way is because, yeah, we're always talking about listen to your body. We mention brain science. The truth is we're a combination of both. And so in order to understand how do we end up emotionally eating, well, we do literally have to understand the emotional, and then we have to understand the eating. And that will inform us about why are we doing what we're doing. So the brain. First, we have to understand the brain. The brain science 101, as far as it relates to this, is your brain works in plus or negative. So it's either getting stressed out or it's experiencing stress relief, which is good. <laughs> it's a good thing for stress to come down. We have stressors which make our stress go up, increase our cortisol, and this could be anything from traffic and air pollution to your roommate, to your boss, to your mom, to your pet. Anything can be stressful, including the thoughts inside your own head. So those are the things stressing you out. And then you have the things that are making you feel better, which are your happy chemicals. There are four of them. Dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins. You don't have to know all of these, but you do have to understand the way the brain works, which is some bring your stress up, some bring your stress down, and that's what we're playing with. So that's the brain. Why do we have to understand the brain? Well, sometimes your brain wants something and your body wants the opposite. Sometimes your body wants something and your brain wants the opposite. So to understand why we're doing things like eating when we're not hungry, well, our body doesn't want food. Our body isn't hungry. So why are we eating? Well, it has to do with the brain. Because if we're not eating for the body, all there is is brain science to explain why we're doing what we're doing on the physical dimension. So I use this as a kind of introduction because when people approach me about what do I do about emotional eating, I get myself into this situation where I'm emotional and I'm stressed and what do I do when I'm there? Well, part of it is understanding how you got there to begin with because what we need to know is not just how to bring our stress down after the fact, but how to avoid getting our stress that high to begin with. And that's not about what's going on in the body. That's all about what's going on in the brain. And when I say the brain, I mean specifically your stress and your emotions that live in the limbic system of your brain. And so on one hand, when you're talking about emotional eating, the most important thing for you to understand is that you're not talking about the eating. The issue is not with the eating. The issue is with the emotional. And so that's how we get into this cycle of yo-yo dieting is if we think of this as a physical problem. If you think that the food and the eating is an issue, you're going to try to address the food and the eating, but that's how you're going to stay stuck because all you're ever dealing with is the body. And that's what big weight loss cor corporations are really not addressing is a lot of the brain science around why did we even end up here? How did this even happen? So I say all of this so not only just so you have an idea of what's going on, but so that you can start barking up the right tree. You don't want to keep manipulating the food and going for weight loss on the physical. You want to really think about what's going on in the brain. If you're emotionally eating, think about the emotions, the limbic system of the brain. So what do you do about all this? Well, how do you bring your stress down? Instead of thinking about size reduction physically, you want to focus all of that energy on stress reduction psychologically. Instead of all the portioning, weighing, tracking, calculating, all of the food stuff, 
You want to use all of that willpower and all of that determination and instead focus it on stress relief. So what does that look like for you? Maybe it's taking a walk. Maybe it's meditating. Maybe it's a deep breath. Maybe it's calling a friend. Maybe it's a glass of wine with dinner. Maybe it's whatever, whatever it is for you. And don't make this another addiction transfer into alcoholism. That's not what I'm, <laughs> that's not what I'm suggesting. But the point is what you need is stress relief. You don't need to cut calories. That's going to add stress. And then it's going to contribute to you staying in this cycle. When you're emotionally eating, you want to pay attention to your emotions. You want to think brain science. You want to think stress relief. You want to think neurobiology. You want to ignore all of the messages that are making you feel like this is actually a physical problem. Because if you're eating when you're stressed out and you're eating when you're emotional, it is anything but a problem. Your brain is operating properly. Your body is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which is finding food in a, in a time of stress. So don't think of this as a physical issue. That's my main point. You have a body, you have a brain, and you combined are the human being. Meaning, when you have a problem in your human system, your body is not doing anything wrong. Your body works to serve you. Your body is protecting you. Your body heals itself. Your body doesn't have the problem. Think about your brain. Ask yourself, what is it that created this stress? What is it that created this emotion? And what are healthier ways that you can deal with it? That is how we can actually successfully address emotional eating in the long run. So I hope this makes sense. Um, I personally am very passionate about the distinction between the body and the brain and it will be the basis of a lot because listen to your body sounds really good but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So instead of getting confused let's just start there. Body, brain, human. If you have any questions please leave them um, and I would love to hear your thoughts as usual. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Bye.